Welcome back, Seth Wing here. You're watching my Turtle Programming Tutorial Series. This is intended as a general programming tutorial for people with zero programming experience at all. It uses the Computercraft mods. These turtles are from the Computercraft mod. And you can find that in the video description, although I'm going to be using the Feed the Beast mod pack in these videos. Uh, turtles use Lua, which is a programming language, but the principles that uh, that I'll be teaching are common to most programming languages, so it should be very useful. And I encourage you to follow along on your own, and hope you learn something valuable. Alright, in this episode we're going to learn about variables and Boolean logic. So first I'm going to open up my turtle, and I'm going to open up the Lua interpreter, and I'm going to show you about variables. So a variable is just a string, or uh, something like i. So if I say i equals 5, then I've set the value of i to 5. Now if I type i, it'll just display 5. That's the value that i has. I can also set a variable to something like this, where it'll evaluate 10 plus 20 and then set the value of i to that, uh, that value. So 10 plus 20 is of course 30. So now i has the value of 30. I can use um, more complicated arithmetic expressions, like uh, something like this, where it uses order of operations. So add, it'll add 5 plus 4, multiply by 3, that gives us 27. Um, but you, there's a lot more complicated and more useful things you can do with variables. Like you can refer to variables on the right-hand side of the uh, of these, uh, equality here. So if I say i equals i plus 1, previously it was 27, now it's going to be 28. Or I could do i equals i times 2 and now it's going to be 56. I can refer to other variables or even the same variable on the right hand side of the expression and it will work. So this is really useful. Say you want to keep incrementing i for a long time uh, for some reason. This is actually something that's used very commonly and uh, we'll probably get to that more in, in later episodes. Um, there is also these things called strings. So for instance if I say each equals quote hello quote uh, this hello in quotes is called a string. It's just a series of characters. And when I do that, h now takes on the value of hello. Uh, if I say w equals quote world quote, w will have the value of world. Now, I can add strings together, and when you add strings together, it's called concatenation. And so I could say hw equals h dot dot w. This is like adding with plus. If, it's like adding two numbers with plus. Dot dot is the concatenation operator, and it'll add the two strings together by appending the w to the h. But, uh, as we can see here, there's no spaces. I didn't include any spaces. So I could do something like hello, or sorry, hw equals h dot dot, and then a space in quotes. This quotes, uh, this string is going to, sorry, this space is going to be a string with only one character in it and then dot dot w, and it'll just add those three strings together, h, then the space, and then w, and now we get uh, hw having the value of uh, hello world. Now, uh, that's really useful. Uh, you, can, you can also print hw and... Uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Hmm. I'm not really sure why it didn't like that. Oh, maybe I need... Maybe I need a parentheses. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so, so print is actually a function, and uh, so yeah, if I print hw, it'll print hello world. There we go. I'm still a little bit new to Lua. I know a lot of other languages, but I'm still getting used to all the little idiosyncrasies of Lua. Okay, so next we're going to talk about Boolean values, and Boolean values are just true and false. Uh, they aren't strings, they aren't integers, they aren't anything else, they're just the value true and the value false, which is very simple. So I could say like L equals 3 less than 4. So it's going to check, it's going to calculate uh, if 3 is less than 4, and then it'll set that value into L. So now L has the value true because 3 is less than 4. I could say G equals 3 greater than 4, which is not true, it's false. So then G is going to be, is going to have the value false. Okay, so now we can say uh, we can do some logic with these things. So I can say A equals L and G. Now L and G evaluates to true if both L and G are true, uh, otherwise it's false. So if I do this, A is going to be false. Um, 
So, for instance, well, let me just go through the truth table of, of and. So if I say true and true, that evaluates to true. If I say true and false, that evaluates to false. If I say false and true, also false, false and false. Okay, so this is just how you evaluate using the, the word and, the operator and. Uh, I can, there's another one that's very commonly used called or. So I can say O equals L or G. Remember L was true and G was false. Now th this is going to be true, uh, or is true if either of the two uh, operands, if either L or G is true. So O is going to be also true. So let me just more explicitly show you all the possibilities with or. Uh, true or true is true. Oops. True or false also evaluates to true. Uh, false or true also true. So it's only if they're both false that this expression will evaluate to false. Uh, maybe a little bit confusing uh, the first time you see it just because it, you know it's not something we usually talk about um, when we're talking about the English language but it's, it's a simple concept. Basically if you have condition 1 and condition 2 uh, this is only going to be true if they're both true, whereas or will be true if either one is true, right? So hopefully that makes sense to you, but we'll be using a lot of examples of this throughout this series. <coughs> um, so something I could do is I could say, so remember A was false, O was true. I can use an if statement like we did in the last episode. So if A, and since A is a Boolean value, this is perfectly valid then we can print yes, else we print no, and then we end the if then else end statement. Okay, so this printed no because A was false, and so we didn't get the first part, we didn't get the print yes, we got the print no. Uh, if we replace A with O, since O is true, it's going to print yes. So just a simple application of that. Um, and we'll see a lot more of that, like I said. Uh, the last Boolean operator that I want to talk about is called not. So if I type not true, then that's false. Not false is true. That actually makes sense in English, right? If it's not true, it's false. If it's not false, it's true. So you can also say something like A equals true, and then A equals not A. And since A was previously true, it'll now be false. I can do that again, and it'll keep toggling between true and false. It'll just keep flipping back and forth. So not is also very useful. Um, so let me get to some a little bit more practical examples of this. So I'm actually going to make a program called Move3. Um, oh, whoops, I'm still in the Lua, Lua interpreter, so that's not going to work. I have to exit it. Now I can edit Move3. Uh, so I'm going to write a little program. It's going to be really simple. It's not going to be something any uh, anyone would really want to use, but a equals turtle dot forward, B equals turtle dot forward, and C equals turtle dot, whoops, turtle dot forward. So now this is going to execute one line at a time. The first line here is going to execute turtle dot forward, and that's going to return a value and set that value to the contents of the variable A. Same thing will happen for the second line, only it'll set the return value to the contents of the variable for B, and then same thing for the third one except for C. Then we can say if A and B and C, so if the turtle was able to move forward each of those three times, then we'll print moved successfully. Otherwise, we use that else, print unable to reach destination. And then we'll end this. Okay, it's a really simple program, but it makes use of variables like we saw before, and also some Boolean statements using and. Okay, so when we save and exit, now if I type move3, whoops, move3, that's the name of the program, it's going to move three times and say it'll move, it moved successfully. Uh, if there's something in the way though, then if I type move3, it'll move once, but it'll, there's something in the way, so now it'll say unable to reach destination, because these the last two times that it tried to move, it was able, unable to, and so... B and C were both false, and then when it got to this if statement, A and B and C, uh, since B and C were false, 
the whole if clause evaluated to false and it went to the else portion of the if then else end statement. Okay, so uh, another quick example um, using variables. So let's see, I'm going to call this one just move test. Uh, we're going to use integer variables. So fuel start equals turtle dot get oops, get fuel level. So remember, this is going to just return the fuel level of the turtle. We're going to have the turtle move forward twice just by calling this turtle dot forward twice. And then fuel end equals turtle oops, turtle dot get fuel level. Okay, so fuel start is going to be the fuel level that it starts with. Fuel end is going to be the level that it ends with. Very simple. Um, ooh. Let me make sure I'm in peaceful mode. Okay. <laughs> I don't want creepers blowing this stuff up. I guess I'm in, I guess I'm in creative. Okay. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to print how much fuel we used. So I'm going to use um, those string concatenation operators. Remember the dot dot. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to concatenate three strings. First is going to be used. And then I'm going to calculate the amount of fuel that we used. It's just the amount of fuel at the end minus the amount of fuel at the beginning. You'll notice that I'm capitalizing at the same way each time. Uh, I'm actually not 100% sure in Lua whether, whether it matches capitalization, but I'm pretty sure. But in most languages, you have to use the same capitalization every time you use a variable. Otherwise, it won't work. It'll see it as a different variable. So I'm concatenating three strings. First is used with a space at the end. The second string is the result of a calculation fuel end minus fuel start. And that should be two if it was able to actually move forward twice. And then it, the third string that's getting concatenated onto the end is called, or is just a string with space fuel. And that's the, that's the whole program. That's all I want to do. Um, I'm going to remove the block from in front of this turtle. Actually, no, I'll leave it there for a second. So if I say move test, that's the name of the program. Uh, he wasn't able to move, so it's use zero fuel. If I remove the block and run move test, he moved forward twice. He, oh, <laughs> he used minus two fuel. That's not right. I think I did the calculation wrong here. Fuel end minus fuel start. Um, right, because he starts out with more fuel than he ends with. So it should be fuel start minus fuel end. Right, so if he starts with... 30 fuel ends with 28 fuel, that, that'll be 30 minus 28, which is 2. Okay, and then we'll run the, the program one more time. He moves forward twice, says he used 2 fuel. So again, not a program anyone would ever really want to use, but it does, it does give you a good example of using variables um, and also string concatenation. So I think I'm going to uh, end it there for now, and hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.